All right, with so many putters out there to choose from, I figure I'll help you out. Let's go over how to choose a good putter for you. Welcome back to the Golf Shop. Jim McCleary here, and this is the McGolf Channel, where we talk about golf club repairs, golf club reviews, golf club fittings, all so your scores can go low. If you would, like, subscribe, and that way more of this information gets out to the YouTube universe. We do a live stream on Mondays. It's called What's in My Drawers Golf Talk, and we talk about the same stuff. People come to visit. It's a good time. It's live and interactive. Join us, YouTube, Facebook, X. It'll all be out there. Okay, St. Patrick's Day, wearing the green, got my green chair, got everything out here, and it's St. Patrick's Day's putter, <laughs> putter preference. How about that? Let's just keep going with the piece. We need to understand about why, what putters work, all right? They're in, in, the, put, in the golf industry, one of the easiest ways to get into the golf industry is by the use of a putter, or designing of a putter, or making a putter because it's inexpensive to make to an extent in comparison to all the other things that go into irons and drivers and what they have to do to compete on the open market. It's a very small thing that you can do in order to gain notoriety very fast, okay? And normally what happens is once you've done very well with putters, then you expand, maybe wedges and irons, and you just keep building and building and building and building until eventually you're a full-on OEM of golf equipment. All right, so because of that, there are several putters to choose from, several manufacturers to choose from, but we're gonna find out there really aren't a lot of putters to choose from, and we'll talk about that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about this in several steps, like what is a putter, what are the putter necks, shafts, grips, the whole nine yards, and what can work with you, so stay tuned. It'll be, it will take, it's gonna go for a while. Not a long while, but it'll be there for a bit. All right, so number one is, what is the type of putter? Let's break it down into two categories. One would be a mallet putter, okay, a mallet putter. A mallet putter would be exactly what one would think. It is a big hunk of material at the bottom of a club, and it comes in various shapes and sizes. Quite possibly the most popular right now, and thanks to, thanks to my, my Odyssey, Wilson and Mizuno folks for we're going to get this thing through but right here is probably one of the most popular styles in mallets and the reason being uh, is because it's MOI and we'll get into that here in a second. The other style is a blade and the blade started out as what they call the BB8802 so if you've ever been to Putt Putt or any of those places where they have mountains where they go golfing on that particular kind of putter is very similar to the shape of a 8802. It's just this really kind of funky toe look with a rounded nose, and there were several versions of that in the day. In fact, Wilson still makes a copy of the 8802 for those people that like it. It's a, it still has its purpose. It just, with everything that's going on in the world, as far as putters go, it, uh, it can be left behind very rapidly. All right, the other one being a blade, all right, the blade. And as you can tell, it is much, much smaller than, than the mallet. It has a particular kind of shape here and a look here. Now, the blade has, is almost synonymous with an Anzer style. Anzer style came from Ping, all right? Uh, if I say the name right, Karsten was the, was the originator of Ping, and he made the Anzer. He first, his first putter, which the, the company's name Ping came from, was the sound that the putter actually made. It was like ping, and it was a very distinctive sound. And it was basically two rails of metal with, uh, that were joined at each end where the, the hosel was adapted into the heel and made this really obnoxious sound. He designed the Anzer. The Anzer became a, a staple, an absolute staple throughout the putter industry. Everybody has one that looks like this, right? Odyssey's got one, Wilson's got one, Mizuno's got one, Bettinardi's got one, Peretti's got one. They all have one, and they have their own little takes on it, so they can't be saying that they're copying. But look, all right, if you got a lot of weight out here, a lot of weight out here, the toe goes down like this, and the face like that, it's an Andrew-style putter. Nobody's going to debate that part. 
It's their idea of how they're improving on it, okay? How they improve on it. So we have the two basic styles. Now, there are all kinds of versions of that, right? I showed you two versions of the mallet with, here's a third. This one's new on the scene. This one could be considered a mallet, all right? And we have the two blades, and here's a, and another blade that is just double wide, and that's what it's called. It's double wide of a normal Anzer style bladed putter. So as you can see, the, if, you, if you narrow it down into these two categories, that, there, that and it becomes uh, almost cosmetic in its appeal. Now, that's the style. Now the next thing we gotta talk about is how it goes into the head. Because in the day, it used to be mallets were only face balance, which means that the, that the putter would only look like that when you held it up like this one does right here. And then the other one would be a toe hang, which would be like this one does when you hold it. Okay, so in the day, there was really only two. You had one that if you had a very arcing style putt that you would like a blade because it fit that stroke more. And it was straight back, straight forward was more mallet. Okay, well those days have gone, right? Those days are gone. So here's the reason being. If we go back to my double wide, and we'll just start with the blade, so this has a double bend shaft that's over the hosel. Double bend meaning it bends here, and then it bends here. And if you look, oh look at that, it's more of a face balance kind of bladed putter. So if you really, if you're more of a person that dealt with angles, say carpentry or, some, or mechanical, <clears throat> and you like something with an angle but yet you were straight back and straight forward, you may find that this might be better for you. Okay, now let's say you can't line up a putt to save your life. And <laughs> all right, let's say that you can't line up a putt to save your life and you like uh, lines on a putter, you like a lot of lines. So if you had something, let's just say that looked like this and it had a lot of lines on it, right? So it's easy to line up. And that's always been the thing, is that people could make more putts if they could align the putter. Okay, so there it is. But now you got this, arc, you have an arcing stroke. Well, then that putter's gonna fight you all day long, right? Now we introduce what's called the S neck, or the Z neck. And what it is, it's this little bit right here, you see that? Right there that comes off of a mallet. Now, this one's the Mizuno, and of course it's the popular design and it has the S neck. And what it does is, if you look, there's toe dangle, right? So now you have a mallet that arcs, right? That arcs, and now you have alignment, kind of the best of both worlds, right? So you have all of that, all right? So now, these are all clubs that are primarily focused that go into the heel of the golf club, right? So you can have this one, you can have this one, and you can even have this one. They all go into the back of the end of the heel of the golf club, which is where it's really gotta go. There are some rules. The rules of golf talk to how big the golf club could be, uh, front to back, side to side, tall, where it goes in, how short it can be, how tall it can be, all that kind of stuff. So when designers got to go, they got to get really, really familiar with these golf clubs or with the rules of golf so they can make a conforming golf club. Now the one mallet that there's kind of a, a smaller mallet, which you'll see looks like this one or even like this one, these two, they're the mini mallets. We'll call them mallets. These are what the original mallets were came from. You see their shape where they're rounded on, on the bottom. And typically, these are the ones with a double bend, and they both do the face balancing. Okay. So now we know where they go. So back into the, there was one place that you could put a golf shaft that you would think, well, if you're straight back, straight forward, this thing ought to be really, really good. Hence, center shaft. Center shaft, all right? Center shaft. 
these guys uh, came into play. These guys came into play a little bit later in the in the history of golf in order to make this in it, make this thing work. And really, it came from a croquet stroke, right? It was in the middle of the club, and croquet strokes because they're between your legs and you're st you're straddling the line. Totally illegal. You're not allowed to do that. However, you're allowed to be from the side, which came side saddle. And then those guys that really just wanted to use their arms and it would come like this and, you know, center shafted tended to work. However, it was very delicate this way. You could miss a putt if you're on a muscle twitch. Now, yeah, you could on another one, but it was, it was more intensified with the center shafts. So now we have heel mounted, we have steel or center shafted, we have mallets, we have blades, we have different kind of neck configurations. And the last thing we need to talk about are grips, all right? Grips, well there are a ton of grips and I like different grip manufacturers. They, uh, you know, even with the, with, the, with the established ones, right? We got all kinds in here. Let's get these two, all right? There's all kinds, right? There are all kinds in here. You know, the biggest companies, Golf Pride, they're more about the standard or what we call the traditional where it has a flat across the top and more of a triangular shape so it sits into your fingers. And uh, right now, probably one of the more popular ones you're gonna see in that is made by Lampkin, the etched model. You see a bunch of the lines that are coming down through there. Not only in here, but in Mizuno is real popular with them. I think what it is, in a lot of cases, it's a familiar shape. And you can also do a lot of graphics because the, the face is very, very wide. All right, so somebody, uh, a, an upstart company comes on to the scene, Superstroke, and dares to challenge the way that golf grips are supposed to be made for putters. And so Superstroke hits the ground with uh, a rounded one, big wide ones, right? Just huge. And all of a sudden this became popular, why? Because it, sort of, it was to quiet the wrist down. That whole flippy thing that was going on, totally removed that, that's what they were saying. In some cases it did, right? Now Superstroke is an established company that makes really neat golf grips or putter grips and they also make full swing grips. Uh, this is just one example. There are several of them out there. Here's another one, right? With the, if you look at the profile of it. All right, now that's out there and here's Wynn. They're known for their soft golf grips and they're also making a large grip. They also make Standard ones, they also make uh, mid-size and that kind of stuff. Right now, from, my, from what I've seen, mid-sized pistol grips are pretty much the more popular as far as what you see on stock golf clubs. But don't let that stop you from experimenting. These don't cost a ton and they can get out there. Now, the next one you don't see hear a lot about, but I do like them, is Jumbo Max. All right, Jumbo Max makes long putter grips i.e. Bryson DeChambeau type stuff, but they also make one to compete with the Super Stroke. It has a bit of a different tack and the way you go with that one. The next one, which I just think is just the really coolest story, is the Garson Grip. Of course, green, St. Patrick's Day, green, green. And he has several different shapes with the idea that it makes to bring your hands in or your elbows in so that you make a more aligned stroke, all right? The ultimate here is a golf grip that was designed for all the different grip styles. So you, you now you're seeing the gator or the pencil or whatever you wanna do. So this one will hold like this, it'll hold like that, it'll hold like that, you know, it'll hold like that, and there's just all different kinds. This one would fit a lot of those typical golf grips. So what am I saying? So once you get the the putter that matches the way that you swing the putter, right? Then you get the, sh the shape that you like. Then you have the grip that you like. You're almost there. You are absolutely almost there. And those are the things that you can, tra that you can try out, right? Those are, when you go get fit, the fitter will know these different things for you. So you don't have to guess. So I always suggest getting fit. I always do, it's one of those things. Now, let's say you're in a rural area and there are no fitters. So this is what should help you out. Now that you know how a putter is going to work for you, you can go, oh, that's the reason why I kept pushing these shots. Okay, this is the reason why 
uh, I kept pulling a shot. This is the reason why I always felt uncomfortable over a putter. This is one of those reasons, okay? Now, the last bit here is, is loft and lie. Length, loft, and lie, as a matter of fact. Length now is very, very important in a putter. He's like, oh, I just choked down. Well, you could, but you want to be very, very consistent. I don't recommend doing that. So when you do this, you know, there, there's going to be a point in time where they're going to say, oh, you want your eyes right over the ball. Well, that's half the truth, all right? Half of the truth. So if you had the golf ball, you got a golf ball, and if you're looking at it right here, and you're right down there, and everything is in a line, that's not a bad spot. What, I, what I'm seeing nowadays is that when you go to look down upon this, upon the, the golf ball, and you need somebody to eye it for you because unless you're looking into a mirror, you're not gonna see it properly. You're gonna think, oh yeah, I'm right there, I can see it, because your eyes have a very wide field of vision. You wanna have your eyes over the ball or somewhere inside the line, not over. Over is, what I like to say is taboo, except for certain occasions where people have eye stigmatisms, wear glasses, and it's not an everyday case. It's a very few folks that can get over the line and see it. Why is that important? It's so that you can actually see the line of the putt, okay? So in the way that you line up, whether you're very tall at a dress, whether you're very bent over at a dress, or you're cockeyed or whatever in order to be able to see the line of the putt. So over the ball or just slightly to the inside. I don't mean two foot. And when I was getting fit for my putter, found out I was about this far inside the putt. And I was like, whoa, that's not right. And immediately my putter got better. And where your eye alignment will help you determine your length. All right, once you get that length down there, it is. Now, where you, how you hold your hands, how you hold your hands, whether you're very up or where you're very down, there's a whole, and it could be whether you do an arm lock, whether you're doing a broomstick, right? All these things have a different play on how you address the ball. You know, be very upright with a broomstick, it'd be a little bit less upright with an arm lock, and then more traditionally you'll be bent over unless you have some sort of medical issue. Well, okay, fine. Now what that does is that will, that will change how this gets to here. Now the idea here is that you want this to be sold, mean flat on the ground, and then this will come up in how you hold the club. So if you press the club down, that would come up, which means that you would need a flatter lie. Or if you hold it like this and you go up, now that would mean you need a more upright lie in order to get the club back down to this center area. All right. So there's the second one. So now the next part of it is, so now that we have the right length to the right lie angle. That's awesome. Now it's loft. Most greens are done nowadays are very manicured as opposed to the era of Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicholas, where they are considered hairy. They're very, they can be very fast. They can, you know, and, and fast and slow is relevant to the golfer. But in the modern time, they've gotten faster. All right. When they've gotten faster, you don't need as much loft, meaning because there's not as much grass actually in order for it to get on top of. Right? And so you need a little bit less loft. It used to be four to five degrees, sometimes 10, and the max is 10, but about five to six degrees in the day, now it's three to four. And the idea is to get that ball rolling as on, online as quickly as possible. Now you're gonna hear stuff about overspin and, and getting the ball rolling, forward roll, that whole nine yards. There is something to the forward roll. I don't know if anybody's ever really got immediate forward roll on every single putt. Uh, there's always, there's been studies that would say it's the first 10% is, is a given that it doesn't, and that's the skid that you gotta fight, and then the rest of the putt is out there. So if you had a 20 foot putt, two foot of that putt is gonna be launching and skidding, and then it's gonna take off and go rolling. Can you create immediate overspin? Yes, but I would think it's more of an accident than anything else. Okay, now, so now we've got the style, We've got the necks, we got the grips, we've got how they putt, we know the loft length and lie, and the last bit of this. Okay, and then the, now we get to the last bit of this. The, the last couple here now are uh, how you release the golf club. Now, how you release the golf club and is, uh, is related to two things, the shaft and the weight of the club, all right? 
And a lot of these cases, and almost every one of these cases that are these putters, all now have weights on the bottom of the on the bottom of the putter. We can thank Scotty Cameron for that one. And and they put different weights in there, so it can help you keep the putter open, can help you close it, just make it so it's heavier, so they can sense it, or even make it lighter so it feels better to you. So you might want to consider some of those. Now, tons and tons of testing have been done, and all these putters have been optimized from under the bell curve number of golfers so that these weights hit the most amount of golfers possible. So if you're somebody that likes a super heavy putter, you might have to invest into more weights. If you like a super light putter, you might have to invest into, you guessed it, more weights. <laughs> Just less, right? So there's going to be that one. Now, the last bit here we got to talk about is the putter shaft. In the day, it used to be that the, the professionals would get the stiffest particular shaft that they could get in iron, they would put it in a putter. Why we didn't continue that, I don't know. But hence what happens is putter shafts were made. And putter shafts were supposedly made after that particular item. They were shafts that were very, very stiff that we could bend. I've bent plenty in my time. And, or they would be over the hosel. They would go into a hosel. They had several different kinds. They had flares, even had some that had little indentations that ran up and down. It's called fluting. All right. And, and that was the standard for years and years and years and years and years. Well, here in the last couple of years, putter shafts have made a jump into making a putter better. Okay. Uh, my discovery was with BGTs uh, and Breakthrough Golf Technology and a very low torque putter shaft. And it works, right? It works. And if you do a comparison between a standard putter shaft and one that doesn't, uh, and I did it. I, I had make field putters identically made. One was with a standard putter shaft, one with a BGT. And if you putt without it and you've never putted with another one, you would never know it. But you're putting, oh, that feels great, until you put the other one in. Then it feels like the first one's flopping like a fish. Just is. Now, that's created a whole nother market of golf shaft, low torque putter shafts. And there's tons available out there. Uh, Stroke Lab for Odyssey, they've changed from their graphite steel mixture to now a steel mix. You have KBS that has one. You have even GolfWorks has their own in-house model. Uh, you have... Uh, Acra. Acra has several different models. In fact, it's the one that I use. It's in this one for my lab golf putter. All right, so they're, they're all out there. They're at different price points to be sure. And I'm here to tell you it does make a difference. Okay, unless you're an outstanding putter already, but it does make a difference. Okay, so hopefully we got all this together. So now we got grips, we got shafts, we got necks, we got heads where they go into the head, the types of putters they are, the types of strokes that we want to marry up to it, how you would find out that you want to go through it. Now the next part is, once you get this, you got to practice. This does not make you an expert by any shape of the imagination just by getting a, a good putter. It gives you better chances to be a better putter, but unless you practice, you can never expect to get better, okay? And the one of the best drills is what I call the ladder drill. You can do it in your hallway, you can do it in your living room, you can do it on a kitchen floor for that matter. Set you up a soup can or a cup, or if you've got a favorite cup, and go about six inch increments all the way back out to about, say, six or seven feet, and just try and hit that soup can or try and, and fill up that cup, and don't hit the ball behind you. It will, it will give you feel for the long putts and the short putts without having to go way out and way down in order to make sure that your putt is way more consistent in order to get into it. Yeah, there's plenty of instructors out there. I'm not that guy, but this is a drill that I use in my fittings to ensure people get the idea of the fit, okay? So, the last thing we gotta do is, happy St. Patrick's Day. Glad that you're all on board today. Everybody can be Irish with me today. We've got this right here. I've got my, I got my golf ball glass with my bit of a Jameson. So salute to everybody on St. Patrick's Day. Go find you a good putter, enjoy golf, and let's see your scores go low. <laughs>